Hey there, welcome to ProPilot. My name is Darren. And in this week's video, we're going to look at how we can create a carousel that automatically advances on a timer. In addition to the auto advancing, we're also going to build the ability for you to be able to manually change the position of the carousel as well. So let's have a look at a demo of what we're going to be building. So I've got the preview window up on screen here. So I'm just going to restart the prototype. So we can see we've got this carousel at the top and every three seconds it's going to auto advance to the next image. I can also manually change it so I can just drag it back to the beginning here and then it's going to carry on with the timer and I can keep manipulating it and the timer, the auto timer is going to update and it's going to carry on where we left off. Okay, so this is what we're going to be building in this video. It's going to be broken down into three sections. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's just have a quick look at this demo file. So I've created this very, very basic fake video streaming mobile app. So we've got a carousel, a hero carousel here at the top of the screen. That's inside of this hero carousel scrolling paging container. And if I just open it up, you can see I've got three images, hero image one, two, and three. Additionally, we've got some paging dots here at the bottom. So we're going to make those paging dots change as well as the carousel changing. And finally, I've just got these fake other carousels just to make it look a bit like a real video streaming that we're not going to do anything with these particular slices. We're just going to be focusing on the hero carousel and the paging dots. Okay. So the first thing we're going to build is the timer. So the thing that's going to run the auto advancing. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable. So I'm going to come down to my variables panel and I'm going to choose for this C. And I'm just going to take my this first variable, which is a number variable. We want a number variable, so that's good. And I'm just going to name this timer. OK. Next up, I'm going to come to my interaction panel and I'm going to add a start trigger. And to this start trigger, I'm going to add an assign response. And what we want to do is the first thing we need to do is we need to start the timer. OK, so I'm going to select my timer variable. And I'm going to set the formula to one. OK, so next let's create the main timer. So I'm going to add a detect trigger. And I'm going to call this run timer. And I'm going to target the timer variable. And to this detect trigger, I'm going to add an assign response. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my timer variable. And inside of the formula window, I'm going to create a little formula. So we're going to, we're going to choose our timer variable. And I'm going to add one to it. And then finally, I'm just going to add a delay of one. OK, so what we've basically created here, we've created a detect trigger that's going to run when this timer variable changes. OK, so the first thing that's going to start all this off is when the start trigger runs here, it's going to assign a value to the timer variable, therefore changing the value. That's going to trigger this detect trigger. It's going to say, oh, hey, the timer's changed. I need to run these responses. And this assign response is effectively going to count up in seconds. So every second, so this start delay is denoting the speed. So this is going to run at a delay of one second. And every second, it's going to add one to the timer. So effectively, we're going to have a working timer. OK. OK, so next we want to add some conditions to trigger the carousel's auto movement. OK, so we're going to add um, another variable. And we're going to call this selected item. This is also going to be a number variable. And for this one, we're going to set a default value. We're going to set the default value to one. OK, so within this, we're now going to add a condition. 
And the condition we're going to set is we're going to select the timer variable. And we're going to look for when the variable equals three. Okay. So remember, we're going to auto advance on every three seconds. So when we hit three seconds, we want to auto advance on. So that's what the condition's looking for. Okay. To this condition, we're going to add an assign. And we're going to choose our selected item variable. And we're going to assign the value to. Okay, so that's our first condition. So it's going to look for when the timer equals three. And when it does, it's going to assign a selected item to the number two. So effectively, it's going to be all using that. We're going to use that to auto advance on the carousel. Okay, so we need to create um, some more conditions for the other two for the other two images. So we're going to duplicate this condition. We're going to change the condition from three to six because we want it for the next three seconds. And we're going to change the assignment of the selected item to three. Okay. What we need to also do is we want to add a stop response here. So I don't want the timer to continue on beyond six. So I'm just going to add it because we've only got three images. So I'm just going to add a stop um, response here and I'm going to stop the timer. So I'm just going to stop this timer variable from carrying on counting beyond six. Okay, so let's give this a test. So what we can do is we can come over to our timer variable here and we just turn on debug. And this will give us this little debugged timer kind of little thing here that we can see. We can see the value inside. And you can already see over here that our timer is counting up. Okay, and it's getting to six and then it's stopping because we've got that stop response. Okay, so it looks like our timer is working all well and good. Let's just turn off debug. Okay, so this completes the first section of creating the timer. In the next section, we're going to create the function to actually change the selected item. Okay, so now we're going to build the part of the prototype which changes the selected item. So to do that, we're going to add a detect trigger. And we're going to target with this detect the selected item variable. Next up, we're going to add a condition. And again, we're going to select the selected item variable and we're going to look for when it equals one. So one is the first position. That's our first image. Within this condition, we're going to add a scroll response. So we're going to use the carousel scroll property to be able to move the carousel onwards. To do that, we're going to target the hero carousel container. So remember, we've already made this a paging container. So we're just going to choose that. And we're going to set the scroll value to zero. Okay. So our first image is at scroll position zero and our first selected item is one. Okay. We're going to leave the duration here at 0.2. You can play around with the animation if you want. And the next thing we want to do is we want to deal with the paging dots. Okay. So the paging dots are already native objects. So you can see I've converted them into native prototype objects so we can use color responses with them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color response here. I'm going to target the ellipse one. So that's our first paging dot. Um, and I'm going to choose this, this red color. You can choose any color you want. This is, will, will effectively be the selected color. Okay. Okay. I'm going to add another color response. This time I'm going to choose ellipse two. And I'm going to set the color of ellipse two to white. And then I'm going to duplicate this color. And I'm going to change it to ellipse three. And we also want that to be white as well. So effectively with these three color responses, we're selecting the, the dot that needs to be selected and we're deselecting both dots, which need to be deselected. We don't know whether the other ones have been selected or not. So I could have been 
dragging from one to the other. So we just need to make sure, even if they are already white, we just want to make sure they definitely are. So that's why we're adding all three, three color responses there. Okay. Okay. So we've now got our first, our first selected item created. And effectively, we just need to duplicate this to do the other two. So I'm just going to duplicate my condition. I'm going to come into my second condition. I'm going to change the selected item to two. And on the scroll response, I want to change the position. So my, my hero's images are 320 pixels wide, and I've also got a gutter of 16 pixels. So I'm going to make the position 336, obviously adjust it for the size of your, of your image. Okay. And then turning to my color responses, we now got these, the second item selected. So we want ellipse one to be white. And we want to make ellipse two the red color. And we can leave ellipse three as white. Okay. Okay. We're going to duplicate this condition one more time. And this time we're going to change it so it can select the third image. So it's going to be image three. We're going to scroll it another 336. So I can just use, I can do basic maths inside of these value fields. So I'm just going to multiply that by two. That gives me 672. And I just need to change my color dots again. So I want ellipse two to be white. And I want my ellipse three to be selected. So that's going to be the red color. Okay. Okay, so you can probably be, you've probably been looking as I've been creating this that my, my preview window has been auto updating. So let's just run that, just refresh that and see what we've got. So we should get, yep, we've got our hero carousel. Ah, so you can see there's a little problem on the, the last one there. Let me just check that. Ah, didn't quite make it. There we go. Let's try that again. Cool. There you go. So, this about completes the second section, which is the ability to change the selected item. So this is obviously creating the, the automatic functionality. And in the next section, which will be the final section, we're going to look how we add the manual, the manual changing feature to this prototype. Okay, so in this final section of this video, we're going to build the ability for us to manually change the carousel. Um, we want it to make sure that the auto update still works even when we manually change the order. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add another detect trigger. Let's just hide these so we can focus. Okay, add another detect trigger. Uh, we're going to name this manual change. I probably should have named my others. I'm being a bit tardy today. And we're going to target the hero carousel. And we want to target its scroll property. Okay, so next up, we're going to add a condition to this. And again, we want to target the hero carousel and its scroll property. And we want to we want to see when it's equal to zero, which is the first position. Okay. So if the hero carousel scroll position equals zero, do some stuff. So we're going to add some responses here. So what we're going to, we're going to add first is an assign response, and we're going to target the selected item variable. And in the formula window here, we're just going to type the number one. So we're going to look for when the selected item is equal to one. And we're going to add another response. We're going to add a stop response. And we want to stop the timer variable. And we need to add a stop response because even when we're dragging, the timer is still, still going. So we don't want the timer to carry on ticking while we're dragging from one one image to the other because that effectively puts everything out of synchronization and causes some strange effects. So that's why we need that stop there. Okay. Okay. 
we're going to add an assign. And we're going to target the timer variable. And we're going to set the formula to one. And we're going to set the delay to one. Okay, so we now need to restart our timer. So we basically needed to stop it while we were we were transitioning manually. Once we finished transitioning, transitioning, we need to we needed to start again. And we're just delaying it by one, by one second so that we get that synchroni synchronization correct. Okay. Okay, so that's all we need to do for our condition. And again, like the previous one, we just need to duplicate this and change a few bits. So I'm going to duplicate this condition. I'm going to come into condition. I'm going to look for the second position, which is when the carousel is, is at the second position, which is a scroll value of 336. So it's going to change the value there. We're going to come to the first assign and we're going to change the selected item to two. And we're going to come to the second assign and we're going to change the formula to four because we want it to continue on from the the first count, which is three. Okay. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. We need to duplicate this condition one more time. We're going to come into our condition and we want to times this by two so we get the the final position which is six seven two in my case in the first assign i want to change the selected item to three and in the last assign i just want to change my formula to six okay and in this one i can remove the start delay to set that to zero okay Okay, so let's come over to preview and give that a test. So we should be able to drag, if I drag back to the beginning, you can see my auto advance is working. I can drag back to there. And then the auto advance picks up. Okay, so that brings us pretty much to the end of this video. So obviously there's some other things you could explore doing if you want, which I haven't done, which is Things like if you wanted it to continue to auto advance, wrap around in a in a kind of infinite loop, um, have a go at that. If you if you get stuck with that, maybe ping me a message. Maybe I could do another video just adding that functionality in as well. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps some of you out if you're trying to do this stuff. And Yep, if you like the video, then please give it a like. And if you want to hear more from me, then please subscribe to the channel and um, you'll be notified when I release more videos. Um, just a little plug to my Patreon channel. So if you want to support me, you can head over to patreon.com slash protopilot. And if you if you pledge some money, there's, there's basically two two tiers there. There's a a tier where you get these videos plus the source files. Um, so if you want the source files, then head over to Patreon and pledge for the the, the basic tier. Um, and there's also a second tier where I do more advanced tutorials. And again, you get all of the source files for those as well. So if you're looking for something a bit more advanced, then then maybe that one is the one for you. Okay. So without me saying any more drolling on, I'm going to call it a day here and I'll hopefully see you on the channel next time. Take it easy.